So new sessions. So we've got Mike Lenz from Chinook Mergers and Acquisitions is going to be talking about uh, the business owner's trap. So preparing to sell your business. So even if uh, you don't want to sell your business right away, this is kind of getting things or, or developing your business in such a way that it is sellable at some point. So Mike has been doing this for a long time. He's got lots of experience. And in fact, uh, Chinook is the company that, uh, that I used when we sold Social Media Camp last year. So I've got some experience with that. And as you notice, uh, the session is going to be on June 28th. So that's actually two weeks from today. So up until this point, we've been doing webinars every week. Uh, and I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, please actually type into the chat and let me know. I'd be interested to hear. But I think there's a bit of webinar fatigue going on with all these kind of free webinars and stuff that are happening. We're trying to keep the content as relevant and useful as possible. But uh, we're going to go from every week to every two weeks from now on. So two weeks from today, uh, Mike Lenz talking about preparing to sell your business. So just let me know in the chat there what you think about all the, uh, you know, how many webinars are you attending on a regular basis? Zoom zombie. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. And welcome. Yeah. So we've got lots, lots more people logging in now. Justine. Angela, hello, how are you? Welcome, Angela from Vancouver. This is great. Okay, so that's uh, Mike in, uh, in two weeks from today. So uh, uh, more news about that. You can uh, register for that on the Soho website. Uh, I'll pop a link in the chat uh, shortly. <clears throat> uh, so on with the show. Uh, today we've got, congratulations, your brand new website is a leaky bucket. So that's a loaded title if I've ever read one. And we're gonna deliver on that today. Uh, and the kind of subtext uh, behind that is just because it's new doesn't mean it works. Mark's site was a mess of loose ends and dead ends. That's sort of his description. Now it's a beautifully designed site. It's absolutely uh, gorgeous and phenomenal. But sometimes that being the case, uh, if the foundation, and we use the analogy of the house in, in the description, if uh, when you're building a house, if you don't get a land survey, and you don't make sure that you're building on solid land and uh, you know it's not kind of crooked and you make sure it's level. Uh, when you build the house, there's gonna be some leak, leaks, there's gonna be some drafts. So same thing with a website. Uh, you wanna make sure that your beautiful website is actually attracting the traffic that you want and it's ranking well. And some of the things that have been done aren't actually harming your domain authority or ranking with Google. And that can easily uh, be the case. So that's what we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> and um, so we went through this already with Mark. It was a couple of months ago. Uh, and he was kind enough to leave us uh, a little uh, gem of a um, testimonial on uh, Google. So thanks for that. And he says, in short time, we've worked together on my SEO audit. B West has opened my eyes to opportunities and fixes that can be turned into RIO. Uh, sorry, ROI, almost instantly. So return on investment, which most business owners are, are interested in. And certainly Mark as a brand strategist needs to generate qualified leads to get people to come into the site. And so that's what we're doing with them now. He went on to say that trepidation and fear of wasted money held me back. It was unwarranted fear the US delivers. Thanks very much for that, Mark. And hopefully he's gonna pop in, I, I hope maybe if he's got time later towards the end of the webinar and, and uh, say a word or two. Okay, so the, uh, the, the master behind the screen, uh, you can pop your head up there anytime if you want, Chris, Yay. who is responsible for, yeah, most of the, um, uh, the smart work behind the scenes doing the SEO audits uh, and the fixes and so on is uh, the one and only Chris Whiteley. He's got 16 years of online marketing experience. He refers to himself as the uh, Swiss Army knife of... Uh, of, uh, of web, I guess, uh, all things. So he's uh, the WordPress ninja, the Google guru, and the SEO all-star. Those are my words. He wouldn't call himself that. But <laughs> Chris makes up all these fun little words for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited to, uh, I've been through these uh, a million times and, uh, and uh, I love watching the expression on clients' faces when they uh, find out uh, all the great things that were lurking behind their website that we, we can do to, uh, to help them get it uh, where it needs to be. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to you, Chris, and I'm going to uh, take us live on Facebook as well. 
And uh, so here I will stop sharing my screen so you can share yours. Okay. There you go. Over to you. Okay. So it's saying host disabled attendee screen sharing. So I'm not sure what? if I'm at. <laughs> Uh, we'll get that, uh, that figured out. So the, the funny part with these, um, audits is anytime we go into doing one of these with our clients, I always, um, preface it with it. How much time do you have? Because on average, the audits that we do are probably 40 to 60 pages of, uh, of just pure, there we go. SEO madness. And, um, to be able to crunch it all into a, a webinar today is going to be a real fun uh, exercise for me. So, uh, Mr. Burge is going to make sure that we keep on, on track and keep rolling. And, uh, I will I crack the uh, whip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you've got your screen sharing. All right. Perfect. Can everybody see the, uh, the, the screen there then? I'm hoping so. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Without further ado, let's roll. So as, as Chris said, we, uh, were given access to Mark's website. Uh, he called it a leaky bucket. He wanted us to take a look, uh, under the hood and make sure that he was all pumped, primed and ready for some, um, SEO goodness. And then when he gave us access, we realized, yeah, you're not really kind of primed and ready to roll. So what we did was this beautiful audit here. Uh, whenever we do any audit, we look at four major um, kind of pillars, as I call them. Uh, the, the pillars that we look at are um, technical. We want to make sure that all of the, the technical aspects of the website are in place. Uh, most importantly, can Google find the website? If Google can't find the website, nobody's going to find the website in Google. Uh, the next section we look at is going to be um, local marketing. And as well, that kind of delves into reputation as well, uh, making sure that from a local standpoint, the site is able to be found. We look at authority. Uh, we want to make sure that the site is seen as an authority and what kind of uh, authority indicators are in place. Uh, and this is actually kind of popular now. Like people like talk about like, Instagram influencers and all this kind of stuff. This is like the SEO version of being an influencer. And it was honestly, um, this was popular before influencers were, were popular. So that's the kind of the, the SEO claim to fame is that we were, we were talking about influencers first. Um, lastly, we talk about content. That's super duper important, right? We wanna make sure that you've got that content that is on your website uh, that actually resonates with your, your visitors and that you're not just, you know, kind of just filling up the internet with garbage. We want to make sure there's actually good stuff in there that's providing value and providing uh, solutions to problems. So with that in mind, we're going we're gonna to rock through what we found on Mark's site. We're going to talk about uh, some of the tools that you can use along the way to ensure that, our, or that you can kind of do these, these audits as well. Give me just a moment here. Let me make sure I got the chat screen up just in case anything comes up. I want to make sure I can see that and answer questions. All right. As Chris always says, this is the boring dry part, but honestly, it's the most important. Um, the technical aspect, the access accessibility. We look at a lot of fun stuff. We look at uh, the XML sitemap, which is basically a list of pages that are on your website that Google uses to find all the pages. We look at the robots TXT. This is kind of like the, 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 the lock, the front door lock on the website. Uh, it makes sure that there are certain pages that the search engines are allowed to access and ones that they are not. So anything that's kind of in there could be blocking your site from the search engine, which is uh, kind of important. The SSL, so making sure that you're running a secure website. Uh, you've got the proper WW to non-WW redirection. The site's mobile friendly. That's huge. That's huge nowadays because most traffic is actually coming from mobile. So we want to make sure that the site is actually mobile friendly. Uh, there's no coverage issues. So this is something in Google search console. And actually for those of you that um, are kind of on here, Google search console is a tool that Google provides that basically gives you all the health information on your website. It's the closest thing that you can get to getting the same information that Google has on your website. So it's a, it's a critically important tool. Uh, and then we look to see if there's any security issues or manual actions. And again, that's done in Google search console. We look at schema markup, which is extra snippets of data that you can add to your website that kind of gives Google a little bit more information. So for example, recipes are a big, big thing. Uh, if you've ever done a Google search for how to make something, you might see that um, you'll see like, like a picture of the, the recipe. You might see some ingredients. It just allows Google to understand, better understand your content. Uh, so we went through Mark's site. We found the only thing that was really wrong from this technical standpoint 
was that the XML sitemap had a couple of extra pages in there that just didn't need to be there. Uh, we, and we want to make sure that the website is it's lean. Uh, only pages that need to be there, Google's only getting the information that it needs to be. And when you've got a bloated website, uh, it takes Google time to crawl through it. And the fact is, if it takes Google too much time, it's not going to actually go through your website and, uh, and crawl the entire thing. So we went through and we found only that one thing. Uh, for you guys that are kind of nerdy and you want to get in there, this is a Google Search Console. This is um, Mark's site right here. If you go to search.google.com, you can register your own site and have access to all this information, which is kind of what we use throughout the, um, the audit. So again, the XML sitemap is in the sitemap section, security manual actions. It just gives you everything you need to know about uh, your website. You want to figure out if your site is mobile. It lets you know, okay, which pages might not be mobile friendly. And then here it shows that uh, all the pages on Mark's site are mobile friendly. So it, it's basically all that information that we've gotten is using a free tool that's freely available, available that Google gives you. Uh, next section we look at is a site audit. We look at speed. Um, having a need for speed is, is critical, especially nowadays when people's attention span, I've heard that the human attention span is actually shorter than a goldfish now. Um, so for those of you that are on this webinar, if you can make it through the whole thing, that's like a, that's a feat unto itself. Uh, so anyways, mark speed on Google PageSpeed Insights. Uh, if you do a Google search for Google PageSpeed Insights, it'll show up, you plunk in your URL, and it shows you how fast or slow your website is. Mark scored a six out of 100, which is absolutely terrible. Uh, we compared it to some of his um, competitors. They scored, you know, in some cases a little bit better. But the crazy part was, this was a brand new website. This was a brand new website that was just launched and it was, the speed was six out of 100. Uh, and the, we see this often. And what happens is um, people are typically using a pre-made WordPress template those templates are built for mass use. There's lots of different JavaScripts that are running in the background, lots of other kind of parts and pieces moving, as well as having like a lot of plugins on your site is gonna slow your site down. So even though people um, say WordPress is a fantastic tool and every website should be built on it, it's great for SEO, all that madness, it's only as good as who has built it. And if you fill your website up with plugins, it's not gonna be good. So we went through and uh, sped up Mark's site as best as we could. Uh, now, we couldn't actually speed it up as much as I wanted to, uh, just because some of the, the real critical pieces were, were just resource hogs. So unfortunately, we uh, weren't able to do that uh, as best as I would like to. The great part is when you go to this um, Google Page Speed Insights and you punch in your URL, your website, it's going to show you all the things that are slowing down your website. So it's really, it really just becomes a checklist of things that uh, you need to do. Uh, next section here, we looked at GT metrics. Again, this is another uh, tool. I typically like to get a, uh, a second opinion. Whenever Google says the site is slow, I want to see if other people say it's slow as well. And they did say he got 34%. Uh, so again, the, the site was, uh, was pretty slow. Uh, next section we looked at was site issues. So this is, um, this is something that a lot of people won't have access to, unfortunately. This is, there's going to be some things that we use in this audit that is um, mostly related to uh, pay tools that we use. So this is a tool we use called Ahrefs, and it goes through and it assesses a health score to the site and just kind of lets us know what are some of the critical errors on the website. So 404 pages, orphan pages, broken redirects. A lot of this stuff can be found in um, Google Search Console. If you kind of, you know, click around, it's got a lot of like error pages and things like that. I don't think um, Mark really has any, any more, so he's, he's doing good. Uh, a free tool that you could try using is um, Neil Patel's um, Uber Suggest. Now, um, Neil Patel has a, has a fantastic uh, series of kind of free tools that can get you a bit of information that you need. Um, his SEO advice is kind of regurgitated stuff that I think he's learned. So I, I, I'm not really a big fan of his, his SEO work, but I'm a big fan of the free tools that he's given everyone. So you can actually just go into, um, oh, one second, I'm gonna log in here. So this is a tool, his site auditor tool that will actually allow you to go through and find out some of the critical uh, SEO issues with a site. 
we see here the crawling takes 10 minutes on average. So we won't have time to go through that, but fantastic tool to use if you want to kind of get into this nitty gritty um, site audit information. Next up is traffic. We look at uh, traffic on the website and I encourage everyone to check their traffic on a regular basis. Um, Google Analytics is a fantastic tool. And I hope all of you have that on your website. Uh, if you don't, please install it today uh, so you can get as much historical data as possible. What we look for is kind of traffic patterns. My quick answer is if your traffic is organic traffic, I should say, is moving in a positive direction, you're doing good. Uh, if it's moving in a downward spiral, there's something seriously wrong with your website. And if it's just kind of even keel, then you, you need to be uh, making some, some fixes here. So for Mark's audit, here's the interesting part is I compared the traffic with the number of referring domains. So the number of actual domains that are linking to Mark's website. And we'll notice that right around November here, there was a massive drop in the number of links pointing to his website. That was where his website actually launched. He launched his brand new website right here. Uh, and we can see around that time when he launched his website, we can see his organic traffic actually started, um, it was going up for a bit and then it dropped. So this is a common thing that seems to be missed when people launch new websites, is that when you create a new website, the URL structure, so the, the page names often change and they need to be, uh, the old page needs to be redirected to the new page. Google doesn't automatically know that you've launched a new website and you've got a whole bunch of new pages. You need to actually tell Google uh, using a 301 redirect. So what we did with Mark was we went through and um, redirected all of his uh, missing URLs to a new location. And it's something you need to monitor on a regular basis. You can do this within uh, Google Search Console as well. Just trying to remember where it is in here now. Coverage. So if you go into errors, it will actually show any 404 errors in this section. I think there's, yeah, so there's five 404s from Mark's site, but it's marked as excluded. So these are pages that are probably not as important. So anyways, just really important stuff to, uh, to keep an eye on is those, um, any links pointing to your website. Otherwise you're gonna see what, what happened with Mark here, you're gonna drop in traffic. The other thing we look at is, where is the traffic coming from? Now this isn't necessarily related to SEO unto itself, but it's important to ensure that you have a, a balanced, nutritious uh, source of, of traffic. So Mark's site, 56% uh, of his traffic is coming from organic search. If Google will, were to like slap his website or ban his website, he would lose so much traffic. So you wanna make sure that you're getting a good mix of organic traffic, uh, direct traffic. So this is kind of uh, people who are typing in your, your URL uh, stuff from, you know, if you're doing email marketing, that type of thing, uh, social media traffic, and then referral traffic. So this is links from other websites as well. You wanna make sure that's coming from, from all over the place. Uh, super duper important. Next, we move into goals. This is a feature of Google Analytics. And again, it, with Google Analytics, make sure you have it installed because it's a wealth of data, but you can actually track specific actions that users take on your website. Uh, Mark didn't have this configured and it's really important because what it does is it lets you know what pages on your website are actually the most valuable pages on your website. So for Mark's site, we wanted to make sure that we, we wanted to be tracking his contact form, uh, his newsletter subscribe, as well as the, the book downloads. So when we go to his, his site here, for example, we have his contact page right here. We've got his snazzy form. We wanna make sure that we're tracking who's, who's connecting with this. Uh, as well, if we go to his books, he's got a series of fantastic, amazing books on, on branding and brand strategy. And we wanted to make sure that when people come to a site, not only are they downloading this book, but we wanna know when they're filling out this form. And the reason why we wanna do that is we can look at what page did the user land on and eventually fill out this form. So we can kind of see what entry pages are the most important uh, pages on the site. From there, we can go back and say, okay, what keywords are driving traffic to the website? And then we can use that to inform the content that needs to be added to Mark's site that's gonna drive people to fill out these uh, forms. So tracking goals is very important because it kind of informs everything uh, strategically 
on your website. Next section we look at is search queries. So this is one of the best features of Google Search Console is the uh, ability to find out what keywords your website is ranking for. You go in, you click performance. We've got marks right here and we can see down here queries. These are all of the search queries that uh, Mark's site ranks for. We can add um, average position. So we'll go, we can see that if you do a search for brand Bible template, on average, Mark is going to be in position 2.6. It's not always accurate because this takes into account, um, like it's not, not location-based. So it's not always 100% accurate, but it's a great starting point um, to kind of figure out which keywords are actually driving traffic to your website. Uh, we can look at click-through rates and total impressions. So just a wealth of awesome data about your website. You can then do it by page. So we can look at, okay, what pages? So his compelling three-minute pitch on average ranks on position 16 in Google, has a click-through rate of 6.7%. We can actually dig a little bit deeper. So we click on this page and it'll actually show us, we click on the page, click on queries, and it shows all the keywords that, that specific page ranks for. So we can see that three minute pitch is what's driving the most traffic to that, that page. You could get, you get lost in this section and I could talk about this for, for quite a long time. But uh, as you guys can probably see, I'm talking super fast so we can get through all of this and uh, really fill up your brains with some awesome SEO knowledge. So back to the queries. We looked at Mark's site and we, wanted to, we saw that the average position was 23.4, um, 48,000 impressions. So he's gotten a lot of good impressions. The average click-through rate was 5.4%. So that means anytime his site was seen in the search results, 5.4% uh, of the time people were clicking on it. We usually see between five and 6% is the, the average. So he was doing pretty good. If it was any lower than that, we might want to be paying attention to, okay, what keywords is he actually ranking for? Are they very relevant? And that's where we kind of, we analyze the, the keywords that he ranks for. So we looked at the top ranking search queries. So these are the search queries that uh, Mark ranked the highest for. And in position number one, uh, Mark ranked for crying girl. We got a good, good kick out of that. There was a, um, I think a brand analysis that he had done for a client and used an image um, that had an alt tag of crying girl. And now he gets uh, now he ranks number one for crying girl. Uh, McDonald's and peanuts. That's his new nickname. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, McDonald's peanuts is another one that he ranks well for. So again, a lot of brand analysis stuff that he's been doing. So we kind of looked at this and said, okay, are these really the best keywords uh, that, that he could be ranking for. because, of course, McDonald's Peanuts, there's a lot of reasons why people may want to rank for that keyword. Um, one of the things we look at in these places, and we'll get in that later maybe in content, is uh, search intent. Is that, what is someone looking for when they type in McDonald's Peanuts? Um, so if we go and type McDonald's Peanuts right now, the, let's see what we got. We can see people also ask, uh, discontinuing peanuts, contain nuts. So the great part about any time you do are doing any kind of keyword research is actually do a Google search for that keyword. And Google does its best to determine the search intent of the user. So on average, Google feels that these are the top three things that uh, people are looking for. Things can get messy in the search landscape. Oftentimes, this is my, my favorite example. So for example, when you're looking at search intent, I don't know, Google, no, it's a green tea ice cream. Google kind of just gives you everything at this point. It's like, oh, you're searching green tea ice cream. Awesome. Are you looking for recipes? Are you looking for information about it? Uh, you got some FAQs. There's uh, some information down here. Are you looking to buy it? Here's some places you can buy it. So whenever you do a Google search, you want to make sure that you're actually typing in that keyword into the search box because the fact is, Ranking number one in Google isn't what it used to be uh, just because there is so much other moving parts in the, uh, in, the, in the search results nowadays that you really want to pay attention to that, uh, that stuff. But I'm digressing from the, uh, from the audit here. Next up, we look at high volume search queries. These are search terms that um, Mark's site ranked for that had high search volume, but he didn't rank very well for. So for example, unique selling proposition on average, gets a thousand searches per month. 
he ranks position 2.8. So that's going to be page three of, uh, of Google. So an opportunity there is to kind of build up the authority to, um, of that article, get it in front of more people and try to rank it a little bit better to drive a little bit more traffic to his, uh, to his website. We look at search queries, sending traffic. So where is he getting his traffic from? And he's getting most of his traffic from McDonald's peanuts. So again, probably not the type of keywords that he wants to be ranking for. So he really wants to be ranking for terms that his customer is using to try and find him. And that's where we get into looking at some optimization opportunities uh, coming up here. We also looked at um, competitors uh, query sending traffic. So we looked at kind of where are they getting their traffic from? Uh, a lot of them were getting from kind of brand related terms. We saw advertising agency Vancouver. So that was like a good indicator that maybe ad advertising agency Victoria might be a good one. Another one person had like LinkedIn logo brand concepts. So again, it's good to, when you have a, a tool, you can kind of look at what keywords your competitors are ranking for. Unfortunately, this isn't available in search console, but uh, it's, it's, 50% of the time, it's, it's good information. The other 50% of the time, it's not really giving you too much. Um, but the great part about Search Console is you can pull all of those same reports that we just did quite, uh, quite easily. So you wanted to see, for example, ranking position. Here's the, all the terms that he ranks number one for. We want to see what uh, keywords are driving traffic. We just click through here. We see these are the keywords that are driving traffic. Um, Impressions is kind of a good indication of, of search volume. It's not going to give you the exact search volume, but typically something with um, higher amount of impressions is going to, is going to uh, indicate higher search volume. We move into the optimization opportunities. So these are a couple of little tricks that we did for, for Mark's site. Uh, we basically, we look at what keywords is he ranking for positions four to 10? Uh, the cool part is when you're doing a search in Google, um, that title tag that you see is, is, is a great call to action. So what would happen is, let's say that you rank number seven in Google for a search term. If people kept bypassing the top three results and going to your result and clicking on that seventh result, Google's going to notice that and they're going to say, hey, um, why, are we, why are people clicking through to that result as opposed to the first three results? Let's put them in the number one position and see what happens there. So these are just kind of places where we can optimize that title tag for click-through rate and try to get that boost up to that first position. Uh, featured snippet opportunities. So these are places where um, Google, you've probably seen that where you do a search result and there's this big kind of box at the very top and it answers your question right away. That's considered kind of position zero in Google. These are keywords that Mark has an opportunity to jump into and actually steal that spot. Uh, and then from there, we just looked at uh, some landing pages and based on all the keyword analysis we did, we uh, came up with some ideas of keywords that he should be trying to rank for, for his homepage, for his brand DIY page, his busting your brand page, and then his ultimate presentation page. So that in itself kind of uh, brings us to the end of the technical section. Uh, and that's the biggest section. I just got a note from Chris that it's 1130 and there's still a little bit more to go. So so, With that, so we'd be a good poll. time for a poll. Okay, a poll. <laughs> sure thing. Just to give you, give you a chance to gather your thoughts here, I'm just going to launch a poll. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how satisfied are you with the search rankings and domain authority of your website? So basically, the, the overall SEO. How satisfied are you? I, I probably should have uh, left another one, NA, where, uh, you know, if you maybe don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, answer the poll. Just let us know uh, where things are at for you, and then we'll share that just to let you know how you uh, how you kind of uh, stack up with your peers. And um, actually, I'll I'll throw out one of the questions that has come up so far, Chris. Is somebody was asking about Google Google Search Console, which of course used to be uh, embedded or part of uh, Google Analytics and, and was free, and they asked if it was still free. Uh, and I said, yeah, yes, indeed it is. However, they've kind of moved it around. So it's a bit harder to find. So maybe you want to address that. Uh, I know you were going to talk about that. So you can address that at some point. Yeah. 
Well, I can quickly answer that really quick because Google Search Console is the tool that we've been using. It's actually separate from Google Analytics, but you can integrate the two so that the, some of the data from Google Search Console shows up in Google Analytics. I don't know if that, uh, that clarifies the, the answer there, but Google, Google Search Console is, is free. Yeah. yeah, it was just a matter of uh, people were having a hard time finding it. Uh, so here's the results of the polls. So 33% uh, uh, or well, I guess we'll, we'll call it, I don't know, almost 50% are below five. So not satisfied. Um, and the rest are above five. Um, so e either a seven or an eight. So some satisfied, some not. Is 10 good or bad? Oh, okay. 10 is good. Yeah. Sorry. Should have specified. Yeah. One being low, 10 being high. Uh, just unless, an interesting it, unless it's a golf website. If it's a golf website, then one is good and ten not. Uh, <laughs> now you're confusing all of us. Oh, I know. SEO polls. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So there you go. Here, I'm going to stop sharing that and uh, I'll turn it back over to, oops, I'll turn it back over to you. All right. Back more with the high speed SEO madness. All right. Local SEO. This is super important. And the reason why um, this section is important, uh, we call it local SEO, but it's really local SEO and reputation. Um, Google uses a lot of these, these signals to determine where you're going to rank. And the analogy that I use is that when you put your cursor on that Google search box and you start to type your search query, you are Google's customer. And when you hit enter, Google is then presented with a series of leads that they can send you off to. And Google needs to be able to know, who do I trust to send my lead to? And if you think of it that way, it changes the entire kind of mindset and landscape of SEO. I call it the philosophical side of SEO, is that because we've just walked through all of these technical aspects, which are important because Google needs to be able to find your website. But really what it comes down to is that Google is in the business of solving problems and getting the right information into the right hands. And we need to ensure that Google trusts us in order to be, take care of their customer. So with Mark, he didn't have a local profile uh, for his business. So we just showed an example here of some of the business listings. And for those of you who haven't seen it, I'll just do a quick uh, search for B-West Interactive. And it's this guy right over here on the right-hand side where you've got your reviews, information about your business, uh, hours, all that kind of fun stuff. So we said to Mark, you need to have that. And for those of you that have a business, if you don't have one, you need to have one. And if you don't have access to it, you need to gain access to it. Uh, the easiest way to do that is down at the bottom, there's usually gonna be a, um, we've already claimed ours, but there's a way to claim down at the bottom the, the listing. And then you can edit, you can respond to reviews, edit the business hours, um, create posts, you can answer questions, like it's, it's critically important. And this is where a lot of that um, kind of trust factor comes from. I mean, there's a lot of other ones in, involved as well, but really, if you're gonna focus on one, this is the one to focus on. Um, we also look at, uh, for Mark, which he doesn't, he didn't have, so we didn't look at the, um, what are called citations, Basically what that is, is those are instances of your name, address, and phone number in other websites. So oftentimes directories, uh, things like, like Yelp, or even your Facebook page, uh, LinkedIn, those types of things. Those kind of are, are signals to Google that you're, you know, that you're a real business, that you're a trustworthy business. Uh, and you need to make sure that you have a number of uh, these citations in place in order to kind of build up the authority of your local SEO. Speaking of authority, we move into the next section, which is authority and link building. This goes into that whole uh, trust factor that I talked about before with Google, trying to figure out who the heck are they gonna send uh, their, their, their leads to. The authority is a, is a huge factor in it. And one of the ways that Google measures authority is by the number and the quality of links coming into your website. Uh, in the past, it used to be like, quite a few years ago is if you wanted to rank number one in Google for a search term, you just had to have a couple more links than the person who was ranking number one. And it was just whoever had the most links rank number one. Uh, but Google recognized that just people were just gaming the system. And so now it actually takes into account 
the quality of the links, the source of where the links actually came from, um, as well as the, the number of links. So we do a number of checks here to kind of see which links are just, you know, just Mark have any links that are kind of bringing them down. And again, this is where um, Neil Patel's tool can, um, can come in handy as well, is he's got a nice little backlink analysis tool where it basically, you can look through it, it shows you the number of backlinks and it's gonna load. And there's an export to CSV file down here. So it shows all of the links that are pointing to the Mark site. We can actually then like segment it by uh, page score or domain score. Uh, and anything with kind of like a zero domain score, these are the ones that might be, you know, low quality websites. And it's a matter of just going in and seeing if it's, if it's a Russian kind of spammy website or, you know, something other nefarious, that might not be a link that you want. And you can actually uh, go into Google search console and disavow those links. Basically say, I don't know who those guys are. They're linking to me and I don't know why, and I don't want to be associated with them. So there's just a little bit of link cleanup that you could do, but we looked at Mark's site. And the links that were coming to a site were fantastic. Uh, we also look at the external link profile. Again, this is something that um, you don't you want to make sure you're actually you're not just being linked to, um, you know, terrible places. You're not linking out to anything that's kind of spammy. And we can see this in Google Search Console as well. If we go down to links, we can actually see here are the top linked pages on your website. Here are the top pages that are linking to your site, and as well. Um, See, so we can click on this and uh, it'll actually show you all of the pages that are linking to your website. And you can go through and, and inspect those and uh, kind of see if there's anything you don't recognize or something that might be spammy that uh, might need to be, be cleaned up. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. So with that in mind, what we did is we looked at a bunch of link building opportunities for Mark. Uh, this is one of, the, one of the big challenging sides of SEO is actually building that authority and building those links. So the first thing we looked at for Mark was, okay, what pages on your website are currently missing? So have a 404 error and actually have links pointing to them. So now there are links on other websites pointing to a, an error page on his site. So what we did was we just took all these pages, found where they should be linking to and redirected them and recovered a lot of Mark's uh, authority. And again, this was mostly related to the fact that when he redesigned his website, not all his links kind of lined up. Uh, we pulled a link intersect report. Uh, and this is again using our paid tool as we looked at uh, three of Mark's competitors and we found a series of websites that are linking to all the competitors, but not to Mark. Uh, if they're linking to his competitors, then chances are they're gonna be able to link to him. Uh, and then we looked at his competitors backlinks. So again, this is, we basically pulled a report that showed every single link pointing to all of his competitors. And you can go through those one by one basically say, okay, here's the link. Let's click on it. What type of link is it? How did they acquire this link? Can I get this link as well? Uh, and this is the type of thing you can do this with um, Neil Patel's tool as well, because you can punch in any website here and it's going to show you all the backlinks. So there's a great little tool there to use. So those are kind of like the, the really quick fixes on Mark's site that we um, you know, suggested for him to build links. The other thing you can do as well is uh, guest posting. That's a, that's a big opportunity as well. We often will research not only um, opportunities where you can do a guest post on someone else's website, but it's a website that is able to send authority and traffic. So it's kind of a very popular website. So you want to make sure that if you're doing any guest posting, it's not on a website that only gets like 10 visits a month. It's something that gets more like 10,000 visits a month. All right, moving into content marketing. This is the, the real meat and potatoes. This is uh, what I refer to as the, the problem solving side of things. Um, if, if a piece of content isn't serving a purpose on your website, then it shouldn't be there is, is my philosophy. I believe that a website needs to be very, very light and very focused. So what we do is we look at content on the website using Google Analytics that hasn't um, got a lot of traffic in the past year. So we generated a list of pages that only had one visit in the last year. And we thought to ourselves, okay, what do we need to do with these pages? We can either delete them or we can revamp them, try to get uh, more traffic to them um, or, you know, kind of consolidate some of these pages into another piece of content. Uh, we did the same thing with bounce rate. So this is uh, a page where someone has come to your, your, your website 
and they've clicked the back button. They haven't explored anywhere further. A lot of times what that means is the keyword that you're ranking for doesn't meet the, uh, the search intent. So if the user is looking for something specific and they don't find it on their, your website, but they've clicked into it, they're going to click the bounce or the, the back button and bounce. So we look at that with the McDonald's peanuts, for example, we see that Mark's got uh, two posts about that rank for um, the McDonald's peanuts. The bounce rate is 95, 96%. So a very large portion of the people who come to his site aren't looking for his um, analysis on McDonald's peanuts and the interview that he did on uh, CFAX about it. So a lot of these pages, we can think, you know, how can we revamp these or should we remove them in order to ensure that all the people that are coming to the website um, are, are there for a specific reason and you're able to solve that, you know, the reason why they came. Uh, and then we also look at low time on site. Low time on site is usually an indicator that the page isn't, uh, no one's reading the content. So again, we, we look at all three of these to see, are there some ways that we can upgrade the content to ensure that uh, the user is being taken care of? And this is something that every website should do probably on a, on a regular basis. Like every six months, I would do an analysis of your content to see if there is, if there's anything that's, that's kind of just bringing your site down. We did some, uh, Content opportunities. So this is using our tool Ahrefs. Um, we basically pulled a search. We found uh, a number of articles that are currently getting a lot of traffic, but don't have a lot of domains pointing to them. So they're not really getting a lot of authority pointed to that one URL and that Mark could probably write something similar and end up trying to capitalize on some of the search traffic. Uh, we also pulled a report of um, pages that used to exist, but have links pointing to them. So for example, this article here, six, strat six strategy smart brands used to satisfy and retain their customers. Uh, this article no longer exists. So it still has 61 domains uh, actually pointing to it. So what you need to, what Mark can do is grab that URL, put it in a tool called the Wayback Machine, which is at archive.org, find out what the article was about, write something better, we can use uh, Neil Patel's tool to find out who is linking to those. And you reach out to each one of those websites and say, hey, just so you know, you're linking to a broken uh, website. Here is a new article that's actually better. Maybe if you adjust your link, um, you won't have a broken link anymore. And there, boom, you've just gotten yourself a new link. And this is a, a fantastic uh, method to use. So for Mark's site, we've got quite a few opportunities there. And then last one, oh, guest posting. Okay. I talked about that in the previous section, but that is it right there. So we covered that. Low competition keywords. Again, this is a great, um, Neil Patel can do this as well in his um, Uber Suggest tool. We just came up with a big list of keywords that uh, Mark's site could easily rank for. We see the KD, which means keyword difficulty. This is a number between zero and a hundred. Basically it's uh, all these keywords that Mark could rank for if he just wrote, a, wrote an article to it very easily because his domain authority, if we go back to the, uh, let's see where we, the authority section, his domain rating is 52 out of 100, which means his site is considered authority in the eyes of Google. So he could rank for uh, quite a few of these uh, keywords. So that in itself brings me to the end of the analysis of, of Mark's audit. So I probably blasted a ton of information in front of everybody. And this is where the, the floodgates of questions come in, Mr. B. Yeah, great job, B. I've never seen you get through that in less than uh, an hour before. So, uh, <laughs> well done. Yeah, you covered lots of ground and there's a bunch of good questions coming in. Uh, so I'll walk through a few of them. Uh, Glory asked, uh, suggestions for local SEO profile if you work from your home. Uh, so in other words, you work virtually and you don't want people showing up at your house. Right. So that is definitely a common uh, theme and Google has a feature for that. So when you go and claim your, um, your business listing, you can go in there and you, you plunk in your address and then you select uh, your service area. So what areas do you actually service? From there, there is a, a basically a checkbox that says, hide my, hide my address and it will hide. Um, we've got the same thing actually for BWest Interactive because we work virtually. Um, you'll see there's no address on here, uh, but we actually, well, I've got to change that as well. Our service area is, looks like vastly wide. So that's actually one of the things that I re recommend not doing 
is <laughs> is not having a wide service area focus on your your main local market because there's a better chance of you showing up there as opposed to kind of a, a huge area like that and again this is a story of the um the the cobbler's kids not having any shoes we never have any time to work on our own seo so I was wondering why my feet kept getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, so next question. Uh, why would a high bounce rate be detrimental to a website in the long term? Um, high bounce rate is detrimental because what it means is the people who are coming to that, that page aren't necessarily finding the answer and information that they're looking for. Uh, oftentimes what will happen is Google is, is able to measure if someone comes to your website, because you've got Google Analytics on there, clicking the back button, because it's their search results, they're kind of measuring that session, and then you go and click into another result. So if, if you're kind of hunting around trying to find an answer and you don't find it on one website, Google is gonna say, that's not relevant to that keyword. That person, that person, that website, that page is not taking care of my customer. I'm not gonna rank them better. So you want to make sure that you use the indicators like bounce rate, time on site, number of visits to really ensure that the content is meeting the needs of the person who did that search query. So that's where Google search console also comes in handy because you can look at specific pages. So if there's a page on your site that has a high bounce rate, what you can do is just click into it and click the queries and it gives you a list of all the keywords that the site's ranking for. From there, you can say, okay, what's driving the most clicks? So you, we determine post-purchasing advertising is what is driving the most uh, traffic. Well, let's do a Google search for it. Let's look at the top three results and see what Google is determining is what people are actually looking for. If your content doesn't line up with those top three results, you're gonna have a high bounce rate and it's not gonna, Google's not gonna kind of trust your site to deliver that information to, his, to their, their clients. There we go. Awesome. Uh, and the last question, and if anyone else has any other questions, please go ahead and pop that in the Q and A, uh, or you can use the chat, whatever's uh, more convenient. I, I can see them both here. Um, and I'm not sure if we're at liberty to give this information away, but somebody asked what kind of traffic each month does the site receive trying to gauge a comparison to our tiny site. Um, so Justine, I'm not sure what your site is, but, um, uh, Chris, uh, I think Mark's site was in the hundreds per month. Well, I, I will say that um, if, if anyone has been kind of watching the Google Search Console, you, the uh, traffic information is actually all right there. So whether we're at liberty or not to say, we've actually uh, shown it by showing <laughs> Google Search Console. So uh, past three months, Mark's got just about 1,500 uh, clicks from, from Google Search Console. So, so yeah, so, you know, about, uh, about that. So that really mm -hmm. helps anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So a decent amount of traffic and I mean, mm -hmm. especially for given the type of business, really brand consultant. So it's pretty specific, although his, um, kind of service area is, uh, I mean, global really, but, uh, mostly, uh, North America. Yeah. Um, so the, the one thing about, um, I know a lot of people always focus on ranking number one and getting lots and lots of traffic. Uh, the interesting part is that I always, and this is, this is the big thing that I think we always talk about at B-West is, is conversion, is leads, is tracking, is that you can have thousands and thousands of visitors coming to your website, but if they're not fulfilling a specific goal, if you're not capturing those leads, what's the point of having thousands of, of um, visitors? A lot of our clients are local clients who have the search volume of some of their keywords of maybe 50 searches a month. So maybe one or two searches a day for that keyword that's not a lot of traffic. So that's where conversion really comes into place and in making sure that when someone comes to your website, you're capturing their information. So um, yeah, high traffic, unless you're running like, um, you know, an ad based kind of like a buzz feed kind of thing where it's, you know, it's all advertising based, high traffic is not an indicator of success. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I'm always amazed that, you know, when we start to work with clients, sometimes they won't have Google Analytics at all, which is uh, kind of a shame this day and age, but most of them do. But even the ones that do, uh, they're not really familiar, they're not paying attention. And so they, they may as well not have it. Or those that do and do pay attention, conversion goals aren't set up. So they're not actually tracking 
one of the most critical things about their business, and that's really the health of their business, is uh, is the site converting? Is it you know if it's e-commerce, of course that's sales, and that's a no-brainer. But uh, there's other conversions, whether that's subscribing to the email, filling out a contact form. There's some form of lead generation on the site, so you want them to sign up for something so you can contact them. Uh, or even if you don't have any of those, just making sure that your site is actually kind of sticky. So a goal would be uh, if they're on the site for more than two minutes, for example. But there's there, there, there's definitely some sort of goals that uh, you'll want to have set up. Uh, one other question that came in was um, uh, asking about, the, again, the Google Search Console. That, so they're saying that they have analytics. Uh, and there is a place where you can find the Search Console. And, and uh, they're saying it's not set up. So they're wondering how to set it up. Yeah, so um, actually, this is a plug for our uh, Facebook group as well that Chris posted in the uh, comments there. I've got a video that actually shows how to do it. But in essence, you're going to come to search.google.com, click right along here, add property. And what this is going to do is basically you just you punch in your uh, your website here. I think we have our have you at you asked it won't work, but and it's going to give you a series of methods to verify your website. If you have Google Analytics installed, it's probably going to verify for you. Uh, you can also do it through um, a meta tag, uh, uploading a file to your website. So there's a bunch of different kind of processes. But if you guys go to the Facebook group, there's a whole video that kind of walks you through the entire process on how to um, set up your Google Search Console. Awesome. All right. Well, we're at 11.56, so uh, right on time. And uh, as I said at the beginning there, we had a special offer for folks that hang out till the end of the session. And uh, so I've put in the, uh, into the chat there, the link to the Facebook group. So we have, we created a Facebook group a while ago called uh, Minimalist SEO. Uh, and so that's where we're in there um, kind of every day posting live videos and answering questions about SEO. So for anyone on the call today that joins the group, uh, we're going to offer a free uh, SEO mini audit. So uh, here, let me, I'll just pop my face in. Come on, there we go. start video. There we go. And I think the best way to kind of get people so we know that they've come from the audit is that when you join the group, uh, it asks you a series of questions. Uh, just in one of those questions, just reference the webinar so that we know kind of who you are and uh, we can get you set up from there. Yeah, and, and we'll, I, I pay attention to it pretty closely, so we'll see who's logging in. But uh, yeah, Perfect. We'll, we'll offer that free SEO audit to anyone who logs in. So thanks very much. Uh, we hope that you found this to be uh, useful and we appreciate you uh, checking in with us. Um, the uh, registration for the session two weeks from today, so with uh, Mike Lenz from uh, Chinook Mergers and Acquisitions about uh, preparing your business for sale. Our registration will be live on the Soho site probably in about an hour or so. I just got to go in and set it up. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, check back to um, SohoSummit.com. And that will be there. Uh, with that, Chris, once again, thanks very much for sharing all your uh, wisdom. Uh, thanks to Mark. I guess he wasn't able to check in with us. I know he had uh, a, another client call, but thanks to him for allowing us to walk through his SEO audit. Uh, he did give us permission to do that. Um, and uh, if you guys have any other questions that come up later on, <clears throat> you know where to find us, uh, bus.ca or on the Facebook group is a great place to ask that your questions. So thanks very much. Have a great day and we'll catch you in two weeks. Yeah. Over and out. All right. Later kids.